This is Private Van, age 21, hometown, New York City. Education, high school. Practical civilian skills, none. Began experimenting with heroin at age 16. Began selling narcotics at age 17. Entered U.S. Army, 1968. Removed from normal active duty. Status reclassified, probable heroin addiction. Recommend amnesty and possible rehabilitation. Future uncertain. This is Private Joe, age 18. Hometown, Baltimore. Education, dropped out from high school. Has been using drugs frequently. Entered U.S. Army, 1970. Presently relieved of normal active duty. Current status, withdrawn from heroin addiction. Action recommended, amnesty and possible rehabilitation. Future status, doubtful. This is Private Mike, age 19. Hometown, St. Louis. Education, high school. Hobbies, like shooting pool. Has been a frequent user of speed and LSD. Does not like reoccurring flashbacks. Entered U.S. Army, 1969. Reclassified from normal active duty. Recommends psychiatric aid and amnesty. Subject regrets the past. Worries about the future. Present status, questionable. This is Fort Bragg, North Carolina. Van, Joe, and Mike are here at the Army's Operation Awareness Program for drug addicts. Their world is different from the ordinary GI. The physical appearance inside Operation Awareness hardly resembles the usual Army barracks. But part of the program intended to reshape the lives of the drug user demands that they voluntarily express themselves in a way that turns fantasy into reality. Each of these three young men have crashed. Each of these three young men hope they will never have to do so again, although statistically, most of them will within a year after completing the program of medical and psychiatric treatments. Well, I started using drugs when I was 15 years old, and I was dealing for one of my friends because I needed some extra money, and I got started snorting it. And I used to snort about one bag a day, and then I, as the time going on, I found I couldn't get high off of snorting anymore, I'm just burning my nose up. And my partner told me that I was wasting money and I'm just wasting dope. If I just know it, why don't I just go on and sh mainline it, shoot it up? I said, yeah, and I tried it, and I liked it. It was a good high, and I wasn't afraid of the needle no more because I used to be afraid of the needle. And then I just found myself just getting deeper and deeper into this, the dope. And I got strung out real, real, real bad. And I had to, that's when my hustle was at the beginning, and I had quit school to keep my habit up. And went on from there to now. I think my curiosity was really what made me take my first, uh, my first acquaintance with narcotics. When I was 14, you know, and one of my older friends was getting into it, and I saw that it wasn't hurting him, and my curiosity <coughs> set me off to take the pill. You know, my attitude towards drugs after uh, quite a few months, my attitude towards drugs changed, you know, and I was more not for them, but I knew they weren't going to hurt me, or I didn't think they would. And you know, I didn't know anything about hepatitis or anything, and I wasn't into the needle. And that went on for a couple of years, just smoking and eating pills. And then when it come time for heroin, my curiosity did it again. I thought, you know, what the hell, I'll do it one time just to see what it's like. And I did it the one time, and then I did it again and again. Slowly, it took eight, eight and a half months, eight, eight, to, eight months to a year it took for me to get strung out. And then after that, life had just become a whole depressing way just to live, just to go out and get that one fix, you know, and hustling and stealing. But I think it was my curiosity that really got me onto the drugs. You know, I always got into things ever since I was a little kid, you know. I was always mischievous, you know. So I thought I'd get into the drug bag. And there I was. Well, I got started on drugs through friends, just people turning me on. And uh, as I went along more and more, I just uh, start getting deeper and deeper into drugs. Like, you know, first I start using pills, but I didn't use them that much. 
and then, you know, smoking briefer. And then uh, someone just, you know, well, you want to try this, you know? Yeah, and so just start taking them more and more. And just found myself, finally, you know, at first, you know, people, if they would ask me, I'd say, yeah, I wouldn't go out and look for it. But then after a while, I found myself, well, yeah, you know, I'm going out looking for it. And then, you know, I just kept getting heavier and heavier into them. And then I found myself uh, wanting to, you know, buy more quantity, you know, or else, you know, get a more quantity from someone to where, you know, I can, you know, keep enough, you know, for myself because, you know, I, I'd have to. So, like, I guess just knowing association with people from one drug, you know, and then go on to another drug, you know, until it just keeps getting higher and higher. Can we talk about some of the experiences you've had on drugs? Van, how about you? I remember one time when I was on this roof of my, ha of my aunt's house. I was supposed to be on my aunt's house babysitting, and some of my partners was up there, my friends. And, like, we, we had to go on the roof, and we were sniffing glue. And we was about 14, 15 years old. And so one of my partners, he got so high off of sniffing glue that he thought he was Superman. And he leaped off the building and he broke every single bone in his body. It was funny because all of a sudden we just, everybody, everything was quiet, you know? And like, the dude just jumped up and said, I'm Superman, and jumped right off the building. And when he broke every, I thought he was dead. I called the police and everything, they said, what happened to him? I said, he slipped and fell. <laughs> but the dude, he, he's still living, but all, like he broke every single bone in his body, because only from the third, three stories, that's how high the building was. And this was just from sniffing glue. Yeah. He went through a whole lot of changes. <laughs> Joe? Well, the worst thing that's really happened is like a good buddy of mine just a couple months ago overdosed up here. You know, he went out and like he was on parole. So he skipped parole and went to Louisiana. And he died down there. He died, you know. He did another overdose down there, like, you know, he was a pretty close friend. Like, his family wouldn't even go get his body after he died. What did he OD on? Heroin. He OD'd up here on heroin and he lived, but that was violating parole. So he went to Louisiana and did some dope down there and died. Like, his family wouldn't even go get his body. How about you, Mike? What are some of your experiences on drugs? Oh, uh, I guess my own personally is, it wasn't real bad, but it really, it made me think a lot is uh, I, I uh, did some skag one night, heroin, and you know, like, you don't know what you're buying. And so like, I just did a half a bag. So when I did it, it didn't affect me at all. But then about three minutes later, you know, well, I thought I got burned on the bag, but about three minutes later, I was just standing up and I boom, flipped out, just fell down. I hit my mouth, cut open my mouth, and uh, I passed out. And so, you know, the people there, they got all scared. They started filling the bathtub up with water, you know, and they were going to run salt water up. Then I came, came to, and then I stood up, and I, I just passed out again. And so, I guess it was like a minor OD, but, you know, that kind of made me really think. Cause, uh, this was on stag or heroin. heroin yeah. Yeah. What advice would you three, as sort of experts, in quotes, in this field of drugs, what advice would you give to the younger man, a fellow who's 16 or 18 or 20 and hasn't used drugs but is tempted by his friends and peers? What would you tell him? What would appeal to him, do you think, the most to let him know what you three have all been through and what he has ahead of him if he, if he starts on drugs? Right, but like, you can t I can tell a person, you know, not to use drugs and, you know, like what's happened to me and the hard times I've been through and everything, but that won't convince him. You, know, you can talk words and everything, but thought, you can't get the thought across. You know what I mean? I can't put the thought in the person's mind. I can, I doubt, seriously, if they'd even think about it. I mean, they'd probably think about it, but then again, they'd go ahead and do it. Because they probably, just like I said, it won't happen to me. And I just laugh at them, because, you know, I know it is going to happen to them. So it happened to me, and it's happened to everybody else I know. I once had the thought, no, nah, I'm not going to get a habit. Yeah, okay, that's what you might think, but, uh, it doesn't work like that. You know, it's another life. Once you do it. The best, well, I think the best thing you can tell them, first off, is the truth. Exactly what it's like. And, uh, 
just like, you know, I I can't come down on anyone. You know, it, this is my feeling. Saying they want to do drugs, saying, no, you're, it, you know, you're stupid, you know, to use drugs, you know, which it is because I've, I've used them myself. But all I can do is advise them to watch themselves and try to keep their head together. And if they're going to use them, uh, just watch yourself. Be careful and uh, make sure you know what you're doing. Van, what would you tell the young soldier or sailor or airman about Same drugs? Thing that Dickinson said, you can tell them, like people have been were telling me, that it's no good, it's going to get me in a whole lot of trouble. But I still didn't listen to them. You know, I, I liked to hide, and I didn't want to drink. I just kept on using drugs. And no matter what you say to him, he's going to do what he wants to do. Yeah. But one thing I could say is to watch yourself, like he said, because it's going to get him a whole lot of trouble if he let him mess over his mind. And some people can take dope, and when they feel that they're getting strung on something, they just quit. Other people can't, you know. Once they start using dope for the first time, boom, they're hooked. They can't never stop. It all depends on the person. But I will tell them to watch themselves because it's a really bad thing. All the, and I'm going to tell them not to smoke no marijuana because, to me, there's nothing wrong with that. But on the hotter drugs, I would. What effects do you all think drugs have had on their on your lives over the long term? We talked about things such as weight loss and and uh, your face falling in and yeah. your eyes hurting and these little things which are important. But looking back over the last few years that you've all been involved in the drug mm -hmm. cult, what what have they done to your life overall? It's like made me like uh, stop from growing up. I mean, I feel this in a lot of ways, you know. Like. I have, sometimes I have a hard time coping with problems. They come up, they're like, I don't, if I think I wouldn't use drugs, I'd probably be able to just go right through it. But like, ever from once I first started shooting hard dope, I kind of like stopped to follow regular life. You know, the regular routine. I went to another, another world. And now I'm back here again trying to, you know, cope with problems that, you know, sometimes I have difficulty doing. And if I wouldn't have used drugs, I'd probably be able to cope with them with the right procedure. Has it changed your relationship with your family, for example? How about your income? Was that affected? Financially? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I was always broke, you know. And, like, with, with my family, do you mean now or then? Well, before well, and after. I never had much to do with my family when I was strung out. Like, before I did, but then when I got strung out, I kind of just wandered off, you know, I didn't want to be around them. Cause like I knew I was getting off and they knew I was getting off and they didn't want, they wanted me around but they didn't want me around high. They didn't want me coming home when I was high. So I stayed gone a lot of the times. In fact, ever since like, as soon as I quit school, when I was 16, I like moved out of the house. Cause they couldn't take it and I couldn't take it. Always hassling me. And now they feel, you know, they don't, at least giving it the effort to try. You know, even though you know, I fall back sometimes. Van, how about your life? What what have drugs done for you? To me, like this messed it up because I quit school too when I was six, when I was seventeen, and all I cared about was dope, getting high and going out in the street and partying and doing other things. And I had to hustle to keep my habit. Up. And like I knew that I couldn't keep it for my family because I used to on my clothes sometimes when I just didn't feel like going out in the street and hustle. And my mother used to notice changes in me, you know. And like, I had went to withdrawals in the house and my old man found out, like, wow, I blew his mind. He put me through a whole lot of changes too because he didn't trust me no more because he thought I might rip everything off in the house to get some dope. So I just moved up and like, this messed up my life. I've been in and out of jail and my m all the money I did have was gone on dope. And if I did make a little bit of money, it wasn't enough. I just had a whole lot of problems. That's all it is. From this game, this whole, you know, you might feel nice while you're high. But when you just look back and look at all the things you had to go through just to get high, it wasn't worth it.
it, it kind of made me, uh, like Joe said, stop growing up, but it kind of made me very irresponsible. I didn't, you know, really have any res want, you know, or even care about any responsibility towards, you know, anybody, even myself. I got to a point, you know, just so spaced out from doing too much acid and speed where I wanted to kill myself and try to kill myself because, you know, I wasn't coping with the problem. Now, this was, you know, like my head wasn't even together. And it, uh, I went, I went through a lot of changes, you know, and, uh, like, at one time, you know, I had a lot of, you know, wants and desires to make something out of myself. And then during the whole period of time, you know, I didn't care. I just, you know, more or less wanted to be, you know, left alone. I didn't care, you know, just live from one day to the next. I had no foresight of anything. And so with with the family, it, it's, uh, it's kind of funny because they really never knew until uh, recently. And uh, I told them, you know, well, I've been doing drugs and I'm quitting, you know. And so uh, it's going to be hard. You know, well, uh, they said, well, that's fine, you know, we're glad to hear it, but it kind of made them not trust me. And uh, it seems anything that I did wrong, you know, it was, you know, blamed towards the drugs, and they just kind of didn't want to have, have anything to do with me, just, you know, that's the end of it. So, and now it's, I guess it's also made me want to prove myself, you know, back to my family that I, you know, can be a responsible person. Let's talk about your sex lives for a few minutes. <clears throat> What effect does drugs have on, on your sex life? Does it increase or decrease your desire? Uh, how about a girl on drugs, for example? How, what have you three experienced in this in this area? Well, like I had, a, for a lot of time when I was strung out, I had this chick who was like, help me support my habit, you know? And like, all I had to do was live with her, you know? And like, she was, she was doing up once in a while. She didn't get off that much. Like, I was strung out, and she was helping me, you know, she owned a store, and, like, she was helping me financially. What were you strung out on? Heroin. Heroin, and she was and, like, heroin? I, she, once in a while, you know, like, she wasn't strung out. And, like, she, uh, all I had to do was live with her. You know, she treated me real good. Like, that was one of the good parts about being strung out, you know. It was out of sight, living like that. I had a car all the time, and like, I was using her in a way, and she was using me in a way, you know? There was nothing wrong with that. I enjoyed that part of it. But does, does the, while you're on, on heroin, let's say, uh, do, you, do you find a greater urge for sex relations, or? No, it depresses it on heroin. That's you. So oh, well, not me. I mean, like, I can uh, fall all night long, but, like, to have a climax, it's rough on heroin, you know? Like, I've never known anybody to be able to have one. You don't agree with that, Vance? Mm-hmm. I mean, like, when I get high, I like to have a girl with me because it just make me, uh, just put me in the mood, you know? It's like, some people, they say, like you do, you know, it, all you just want to do is just be, uh, be by yourself and just not, I uh, mean, soon I get high, usually I used to go my old lady self up. While I'm here, go with some girl I know down here. I dig that, man, but like, I can dig that, but to have sex, man. Not to, I, I, I dig being about. with a chick. I am not talking about this being I mean, I, well, I didn't turn to be a girl hater or anything. I mean, I still dug chicks, but I mean, sex-wise, you know? You mean you didn't want to have no sex relationship? I wanted to have it. it. I wanted to, but it, I couldn't have it, because uh, I could have it, but it was just difficult. And you could, huh? Me. Uh, more power to you. Yeah. Solve the controversy for us, Yeah, well, I, I could, you know, I could always... There was no problem. I could always ball, you know, all the time. And so, uh, you know, and I and I could last longer than usual when I was on, you know, speed. I just, you know, my whole body, just more energy and everything. I don't know exactly, you know, physically why. But, uh, you know, the chick dug it, and so, you know. And it, it was kind of strange, because she, uh, she didn't do, she didn't ever do dope with me. Like, you know, like I'd like, you know, just like to get her stoned and she say no. But then finally, in the long run, it, uh, it kind of affected me because she got, she just got tired of it because uh, she was supporting, you know, like she'd give me money, you know, to buy the dope. But uh, it affected me in such a way psychologically that uh, 
I didn't care, you know, if I had it or not. If a gal's on speed and you're not, she'll probably, she'll kill you. <laughs> <laughs> you spoke of losing so much weight uh, in your time with drugs. Van and Joe, how about uh, heroin, long-term use of heroin? What, what happens to your body? Do you lose weight and yes. other things happen? I find out, like, when I first started shooting dope, I'd lose my appetite. And when it would wear off, I could eat. And then I got to the point where, like, I'd have to shoot dope to get an appetite. I was, if I wasn't high, I couldn't eat. You know what I mean? Like, I just, the feeling towards food. Maybe I could, like, put some bread and some milk in there and put it in my mouth and try to get it down my throat. Like, I just usually fired and shot some dope and then ate. And I'd get real hungry. You know, I don't know why. It's just the way it worked. But for a long time, I couldn't eat until I shot dope. And I lost a lot of weight. Like, I was 170, and within the year, when I come to the Army, I was 143. So there was definitely a loss of weight. And what else happens to your body there. besides losing weight? Is there any other physical thing that happened? Like my cheeks on my face, you know, it's what people noticed. I didn't notice it, you know, he's told me, like, my cheeks got, like, all sunken in. You know, they just, like, went in, and my eyes got real brown around my eyes. Uh, it was just like a, I don't know, it's like a walking dead person, you know. I, I don't know if I was looking that bad, but I've seen something that like that. You, know, you just, your body kind of just grabs tight, you know, like your jaw. I don't know, you look like a skeleton in a way. What happens inside? Your stomach, uh, do you know? Well, without? What, with, when you're when you're on heroin for long term, what's going on inside? I should ask a doctor that question. Well, you you're, you're doing something to your intestines. I'm pretty sure now, I'm not positive, because I know when you don't have it, your intestines get hurting. <laughs> you know, I, I, mean, I don't know what they're doing. It might be uh, expanding your intestines. And then when you don't have any dope, they get real tight. That's the way it feels, you know what I mean? Like, I felt full when I shot dope. And I could eat and when I didn't have any. My stomach started hurting. But I, ne I never ate that much. You know, I never sat down and had a meal. I'd always, you know, maybe pick up a bag of potato chips and a Coke. And that could last me all day. Just Man, how there. about you? Uh, what, what happened to you when you were on heroin for a long time? Like, I used to weigh about 165 pounds. And before I came to the program and everything, I weighed 130. 129. I was real, real thin. Like, all my clothes, all my pants I had, they were just baggy. I couldn't, I didn't look good. I, just, I was just skinny. Just lost a whole lot of weight. And people could tell. Just like you said, your eyes be, your face would just be all dried up. You didn't even care how you look. You, know? you just wanted some scan. There's also a problem, uh, speaking of the physical effects, of hepatitis and uh, other things happening from using bad needles and, and not cleaning the vein before shooting up skag. Isn't this true? Are there other things that can happen to you? With well, this? like, recently I just saw a guy who was, uh, he was in the hospital, and he was shooting dope right in here, <coughs> right below his wrist. Another guy was hitting him, and he hit an artery. Like, I don't know what it did. It made it collapse, I believe he said. And, like, all his... His hand turned all purple and everything, and his fingers got the size of cigarettes. And they had to cut off his hand right from his knuckles all the way down to his thumb from shooting uh, second alls, you know, barbiturates. Right here in the wrist, it did something, you know, his hand just went like that and just flew out. And they had to cut off all his fingers. Like, you know, it's not too nice to see. It depresses you a little bit. But like, that's the only thing I've known besides hepatitis and different types of blood po poison. I know there's other kinds of blood poison you can get just from sticking the needle in you so much. That yeah. depresses me a lot, thinking about cutting my hand off. I know this dude, like, he was about 32 years old. He'd been shooting dope. Well, I say he was 16. And, like, he'd be in the, be in the summertime. I'd see him in the summertime. It'd be hot out. And you always wear this coat. And you look at this dude's hand, and his arms, they were big, like, Elephant legs, real big. His fists look like ten fists put together. I know. And he always wear a coat to cover up the traps. And arm, both his arms would be like this, you know. 
And like, the dude would never go to the hospital because he was afraid that they find out he was shooting dope. And they probably might want to cut off his arm or he have to go through withdrawal. And he never go. Y'all wear a coat no matter how hard it is outside or what kind of weather he'd be wearing that coat in his hands. It'd be gigantic, real big. Like, you know, no boxing gloves? Well, that side. Boy, and I got, I got scared when I seen him. I didn't want to shoot. I wanted to quit, too. I've seen guys where the whole arm is the same size. I've seen, I know quite a few people that like it. Like, from here down, it's all just the same size, right to the knuckles. And, like, when they close their hand, they can close it, like, maybe, maybe like that. You know, because this, their hand, everything's all equal. You know, from blowing shots and infections, abscesses, and their arms, you know, it's not too pretty. And then I've seen guys with real good veins, you know, the kind of veins that go out like that. And they just be, it look like uh, a little highway, you know, going up and down their arms, you know, just all purple. Just instead of the veins being there, they got scars going all different ways. Crashing, well, okay, you reach a peak, you know, and that's your hallucination on LSD. Okay, and then it starts coming down. You know, as you don't peak as much, and you're just kind of spaced out. What I mean by spaced out is, uh, you know, you just kind of nowhere. It's really kind of a nowhere feeling. <laughs> turned all purple and everything, and his fingers got the size of cigarettes. But I've never touched nothing mm -hmm, that my spirit could kill. You know I've seen a lot of people walking around with tombstones in their eyes. I couldn't eat until I shot them, and I lost a lot of weight. But the pussy don't care oh, if you live or if you die. God damn! Mm -hmm, the pussy. And they had to cut off his hand right from his knuckles. off the building and he broke every single bone in his body through. This has been Direction 71, a special report produced by the Office of Information for the Armed Forces, Washington, D.C.